In our last video on linked lists, we saw how to find the size of a linked list by counting how many nodes are in it uh, with a loop such as, as this one here. And we started talking about this idea that um, if we look at some of the code that we've written recently, we wrote, we wrote one method to insert something second in the list, and that did change the linked list that we were passed in. And yet we wrote this other one that found the size of a linked list that seemed to explicitly change list, and yet did not actually change list at all. And so I thought I'd give you a couple of guidelines that might help going forward um, that you might refer back to. If I'm writing a method, let's say it's called f, and it takes in some linked list, which I, I seem to be calling all my linked lists lists today, list today, and that's all right. If I write list equals something, that does not change the linked list. I mean, it does change list, but list is a local variable, so it doesn't change the linked list on the outside. In fact, I think we want a picture of this. You want to imagine, let's make some more room. You want to imagine that we have this list variable, and it refers, so list is the, actually, you know what? I'm going to draw this differently. I'm going to draw it in a different order. I have some variable called outside, and that exists outside of my method call f. And it refers to this linked list here. Let's not get bogged down in the details of it. it refers to this ugly linked list here. And then I, at some point, say, you know, I'd like to do f of outside. I'd like to pass that outside node to my, my method f. And the method f says that the local variable list is going to refer to whatever we pass it, which means we're going to have a local variable list. So this list is local. <coughs> Excuse me. I said terrible cough again. And list refers to the first node in my linked list, right? The one I passed in. Okay. Now, when I say list equals, let's see if I can go back in time. Uh-oh. Come on. There we go. Okay. When I say list equals, I am changing my local variable, but that has no impact on the outside world, on this outside linked list. Now, what could I do inside of this method that would change the linked list? Well, I could say list get next set data um, to be something, I don't know what. So that does, that does change the linked list. So this changes contents of linked list on the outside, right? List get next, that's this one, set its data to be something. When I set its data to be something, I am indeed setting some data value in a node that I can get to by starting with outside. So that does indeed change my linked list. And likewise, and I think if you understand that, you'll understand this one. If I say list get next set next to be something, and I'm throwing in this get next just to make it look more general, but obviously if I just say list dot set next, that also changes the linked list. But I wanted to show you that I don't even have to change the list itself. I can change a node that list refers to, and that still changes the uh, this changes the structure of the linked list. Okay. So anytime we say set data or set next on a node that we can get to from the outside of the code, then we are changing the linked list. Anytime we simply say local variable equals we're just changing something locally and we're not impacting the larger linked list. This will get trickier as we start making uh, classes with fields that are linked lists where one of the things we can do is change the value of a field, but alright, let's put that off till later. So I think this gives you a good sense of when a method is going to change a list in some way and when it is not going to change a list. Okay, in the second part of this video, I want to do something somewhat unrelated, and that's, in fact, it's so unrelated that I think I will start a new page. There we go. And it's clearly very related to linked list, but I want to do one example that I, I don't think relates to what we just saw. So suppose that I make my favorite linked list of A, B, and C. And in this example, what I want you to do is to figure out what does this code do. Set next, 
text. So this is a sort of brain teaser of linked lists. What does this code do? Right? What's the value of x? Oh, let's switch colors for a moment. What's the value of x get next get data at the end of this method? And what's the value of x get next equals x get next get next? And I want to know what the value of size of x. And remember, size is that code that we wrote. Oh, where is it? It's out here somewhere. Size is this method we wrote to count how many nodes are in a linked list. So I want to know what is the size of x. So here are the three questions I want to answer about my about this code segment at the top. And the main thing I want to impress upon you is whenever you're asked to do something like this, draw a picture. You can't figure this out. I can't figure this out. Nobody could figure out what this what the value of these expressions are if we don't know what the picture looks like. So we're going to draw a picture. And we know what the first line of code does. It makes a linked list with a, b, and c in it. And it makes x, the variable x, refer to that linked list. So we'll draw all of that. Here's here's my linked list. And it's supposed to have a, b, and c. Remember with these box and pointer diagrams that the first part of the box is the data value. And the second part is the reference to the next node. And in the case of the last node, the reference to the next node, uh, that node refers to <coughs> null. And I indicate null with a slash. And that's supposed to be a slash. OK. So that's the first line of code. What does the second line of code do? x equals x dot get next. And you can come up with all sorts of crazy things like copies B into where A is or something like that. But no, we can figure out exactly what this does by following the rules of Java. First, we need to find what is the value of this expression here. And the value of that expression x get next is this node. OK, so far so good. x equals that node. That means x gets the value of this node. And if x gets the value of that node, that means x now refers to that node. Note, by the way, that nothing refers to A anymore. A is essentially gone. A will be, excuse me, the node with A will be garbage collected by Java now that there's nothing that refers to it anymore. Okay, so in fact, I'm just going to put a big uh, squiggly here so we can remember that's going to be garbage collected. That's now irrelevant. Okay, now x get next, set next, x get next. Ooh, that's a tongue twister. What does it do? Well, to figure out what that does, we should take it in pieces. One piece is this x get next business. I see x get next a second time over here, and then there's this set next in the middle. So what does that do? Well, x get next, it used to be b, it used to be the node with b, but it's not anymore, right? Here, x is now the node with b, so x get next is this node with C. So this is x get next. So this code up here basically says, this node with C, set your next to be the node with C. The node with C should set its next to be the node with C. That looks like, instead of the next being null, the next will be itself. So we'll have a circular link list here. All right, now that I've followed the picture, uh, followed the code and made my picture match the code, it should be a snap to figure out what these do. X, get next, get data. Well, X is the node with B. X, get next, is the node with C. X, get next, get data. Well, that's C. In fact, what is X, get next, get next, get data? What's the value of that expression? Well x, get next, get next, get data. That's also c, except here we went around this loop once. So how about x dot get next equals x get next, get next? Well, x get next is this node, right? Here's x, so this is x get next, the node with c. And x get next, get next is here's x, here's x get next, and around the loop again, x get next or sorry, x get next, get next, 
and that's the node with C again. So this is actually true, not because we have two different nodes that contain C, then it would be false, but because they're one and the same node. They both, both of these two expressions, x get next and x get next get next, refer to the same node, so we get true. And finally, the size of x. What's the size of x? Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 1? It's infinite loop. It's an infinite loop, right? If we run, if we try to find the size of x, if we remember the size of x code said something like while list is not null, and inside the loop, at some point, it said list equals list get next. And if we ask list equals list get next, that means list starts out here, and then it's here, and then it's here, and then it's here, and it will never get to null, so we'll have an infinite loop. So this thing here is not really a linked list. It's not a linked list at all. It is a construction of nodes, but it doesn't meet the criteria of being a linked list, which is that we should be able to walk down the list and get to null eventually. So this is some other beast that we created with nodes, but our knowledge of linked lists and nodes and stepping through and drawing pictures has enabled us to answer these, these tricky questions that we had here. All right, in the next video, we'll take a look at, at manipulating a linked list in a, in a more interesting way than we've done so far. And I think that will culminate most of our linked list experience with while loops. I'll see you in the next video.